you are what you think you are. And if you hate your job and you hate your life and you hate your family and you hate, 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 you're, you're, you're just visualizing the result that you want in life. I think it's interesting that when you put a rich life in the title, right? You're creating one, you're encouraging other people to do that. Is it all about money? And then what does a rich life mean to you? Yeah. So I, I, I started um, this part out with a story of my son several years ago asking me at the end of the night, I always used to tuck them in and my boys would share a room and my youngest would, would kind of start to go to sleep and my oldest would always want to talk and I'd lay with them, whoever was in the bottom bunk. And we had great questions. I actually recorded one on my phone one time and I found it on a plane recently and it's just gold, right? It is defining everything that is a rich life. Those moments, those, those situations. But my son asked me, Dad, would you be rich if you didn't have us? And I chuckled. I mean, I, it was a really intellectually funny question. And he meant it meaning money. He meant it straight money. And I looked at him, I was like, yeah, I'd have more money, without a doubt. You cost a lot. And your brother costs a lot. And, um, but I said, buddy, I would have nothing without my family. I didn't realize when I started out getting married and, and a career that the rich life wasn't focused around being financially free. It wasn't focused around having more so that I had more options. It was very focused for me on goals and successes and all these things. Then you have your first child and you realize you would give everything up for that moment. And so I explained to him the difference between investments in humans and people and the investment in your, your work, your, your, your life, the investment of, of money. Even though I do it every day, I would be completely poor if I didn't have the things that I live for. And that's, I, I just spent that time explaining it to him. And I think that's really how I define a rich life. Some of the obstacles that made you realize that this is a rich life, right? Because if everything is rosy, right. like we were talking about earlier, like our kids are living <clears> their best life, they are. Um, if everything's rosy, then you actually don't have an idea of what's better, I, th I think. Is that what you would say? Um, Without failure, we don't really know how good it is to win. Nobody just starts out winning, and if you do, you eventually lose. So business and work and career is all the same. I mean, there was no straight line towards where I ended up or where I'm at today. It was zigzagged all over the place with failures and obstacles. Part of writing this book, when, when I went through the process, it was really funny to me because um, I had to go through all these failures and, and my wife and I were talking about them and, I, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, but there were so many there were so many big ones, big things that happened that shaped the trajectory of my life and career, our life together, our careers, our choices as a married couple, as a father and a mother. My parents' lives are different. My sister and my brother's lives are different because we all kind of, we all work together as this big team, right? And so when I look at, at the obstacles, one I talk about in the book is, is a job that I was kind of working hard for and I, I was getting lost in the role. I was getting lost in what I wanted and I actually wasn't even assessing if it's what I wanted. I was only assessing that I wanted to win and I've, I've always had that maybe as a blind spot. I like to win. I really like to win and I hate losing. And as you get older, you get better at hiding that. But the reality is you know, when you're, when you're going through the steps of a career and, 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 a, and a, a process and you're, you're competing for a role, um, you're interviewing, like you don't, you don't want to lose. And when you don't get it, you, you tell yourself, you practice what you write and what you preach in a book and what you believe fundamentally is a core value that it's okay, it's all going to be fine. And it's meant to be. And these are things that have to happen. 
but you actually go from just saying it to yourself to believing it, to visualizing it, to seeing why you're right. And the, the truth is, it's one of the best things that ever happened to me. It made me completely self-assess the career I was in, 15 years in, and go, is this the path I want to continue on? Do I want to work for someone else or do I have ideas that I need to get out in the world? I love where I worked. I love the people, the company, the culture. I loved it. I don't have any animosity towards anything. And it's funny because when you leave somewhere, you kind of become like a villain. Like your story can't be, you know, this great, but it, it really is. And the truth is, I'm very grateful for failure. I'm grateful that somebody was better than me to, to earn a job or a title over me at that time in my life because I would never know. You keep going and plugging and going and plugging and, and you end up in the wrong path for the wrong reasons with the wrong people at the wrong place. And that wasn't me. So I decided not to quickly decide where my next path was gonna be. I decided to serve and to work with the person that I was no longer working with um, in the role I thought I would have or should have in my brain. And I was wrong. And so the cool thing was I took the time to then dedicate to learning from it, to growing from it and charting the path of where I am today. That is, you know, really living that rich life, understanding from those failures and obstacles and growing from it and then putting yourself in the best position for success. But this last question ties into this part of creating a rich life is, you know, you talked about your, your sons and they're beautiful. Um, and it makes sense that, you know, that you've, 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 you've put yourself in a position where your, your family is so important, but some people don't have that. You know, they just, they, they're not in good situations. They don't have, maybe they don't have a spouse. They don't have, they're, you know, children are not part of their, uh, their path yet. Uh, they're burned out. They're struggling. And it's not even not even getting a promotion, right? It's just like there's no promotion to get, right? So uh, what is the takeaway for that person where the rich life doesn't even, it's like it doesn't even seem attainable. Like can you live a rich, are you asking like can you live a rich life if you don't have any level of rich at all as a part of, is, is, is a rich life um, possible without any money? Is that kind of or where the question is? Or even, even a richness of relationship. Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, it's it's a tough time in many cases. So how can, uh, how do they, they might look at you and be like, well, it's easy for him to say. Like, he's got a, he's got a beautiful family. Like. Yeah, like this stuff just appeared. Yeah. I, yes. always, I always love that. I always love that yeah. aspect of a question because people do assume that where you are now is where you've always been. That's the funniest thing to me because people always forget. I have friends that, that played professional sports and people will say, oh, you're so lucky. You know, uh, the 20 years of grinding to get one good check is not lucky. It's work. And so I think to your, your question, which is an awesome question, is for people that don't don't feel that they're on that path or they, they really don't see a rich life being something that they could they could attain right now the first thing is they have to start investing in themselves so the the, the part of this book talks about investing in yourself investing in you know if you don't like where you're at change it you are responsible for that no one else is the minute you realize that you're responsible for your own path in life is the most empowering moment of your life. And part of my story had me lying on my back, punching up all the time. The world was against me. Everybody was against me. And you know, nothing was going my way the way I had it planned. What? No, I wasn't investing in myself the way I needed to invest in myself. I wasn't adding the skills, objectives, opportunities, meeting the right people, surrounding myself in the right circles. like. All on me. I'm in a bad relationship. Nope, I wasn't, but I was blessed there. And that is a little bit of luck, by the way. So, you know, marrying the right person is gold. When you find the, the right relationship, 
to elevate who you are, to grow from this basic version. I always tell my wife, we talk about it all the time, she doesn't think as much about um, personal growth and development as much as I do, but she's a lot less broken than I am. And so, you know, it's important for me to do those things. But to answer your question, everybody has the choice. That's the beauty of life is it's your choice. Now, you could be put in a really bad situation, but unfortunately, you're the only one that can get you out of it. So it starts right here with our brains and start thinking differently, start, start visualizing success. We are what we think we are, right? You're not wrong. You are what you think you are. And if you hate your job and you hate your life and you hate your family and you hate, 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 you're, you're, you're just visualizing the result that you want in life. And that's not powerful. And so getting to where we are is really important, but it starts with changing the way we think. Have you always been this positive? I think I, I think I, I think I have. I've done a video that, um, you know, reminded me humbly that no, I wasn't all this, always this positive. And if you ask my family, they would tell you no. I mean, my dad used to tell me, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. And part of that was, I always saw something as broken and fixable. So I always wanted to go in and change a dynamic, change someone's situation, help something in a big way. And it also can come across in a way that it's not good enough, that the current situation isn't good enough. And that's, that's not the case. Understanding that that is the way the message comes across is growth. It's, it's growing up. And so, you know, I had, I found a letter from my mom when I was 12 or 13 years old and it was, you know, we were moving and life was changing and, um, you know, it was very, very stressful. I was leaving Catholic school where I felt like I had it all figured out and going to public school where I knew nobody and uh, I didn't know anyone. As an author, I should probably get my words right. Um, I, I, I still speak the way I think. But the reality is my mom wrote me a quick note, probably gave me a small gift, and it just reminded me that, you know, life can get hard, but the way you look at it, the way you view it, the way you treat the people around you in it can make it a lot better. And, um, and she did so with a strong message that I was not heading in the right path with my thoughts, my words, and the way I was acting. And it was a great reminder. It was a great reminder at 42 when I opened it up uh, and was reading the old note that she wrote from a box full of stuff that it's still true today. You know, you, you, what you put into the world is something that other people are gonna receive. And if it's not positive, that, that sucks. That really sucks. So I, I feel like it's way better to look at it positively. It doesn't mean I don't have negative days or negative feelings or frustrations. Believe me, they happen. Mostly internally with your family, where you're the weakest and the most human that you'll ever be. Um, maybe even days at work. But, but I like to make it moments, not days, not weeks, not years.